Hello everybody and welcome to the Flight Sim Deck. My name is Patrick and today we're going to go over my settings for Prepare 3D um, for the year of 2017. Now first, um, the hardware I'm using, I'm using the GeForce GTX Titan X. I have the i7-4790K uh, overclocked to 4.2 GHz. Um, I know that's low for the type of um, cooling system I'm using, but it's... Uh, the only ratio I can use and have a stable performance, so that's what I run it at. Um, I'm also using 16 gigs of uh, 21 megahertz RAM, and uh, I have a uh, 1080p 40-inch monitor that I use to flight sim with. But that's it for the hardware. Let's get into um, Prepare 3D and look at the settings. Now I run three profiles, and now these profiles I have for download on the flightsimdeck.com. The link is in the description, and uh, you just need to go to uh, settings, and I have them at the top there. You can download them and load them in. I like to use a low settings profile, medium, and a high. These pretty much cover me for every situation that I might run into. Um, depending on the airport and the weather going on, you can uh, see many, you know, a lot of differences in frame rate. You know, not every situation is going to be the same, so. I will pick the appropriate setting profile for that situation. Now, generally, I can run medium on mostly everything, on mostly all airplanes, and uh, this one's fine. I'll use low if I'm using something like uh, maybe the PMDG, and I'm at um, an airport that's heavy on frames and it's overcast or raining. Low settings would probably be what I have to use to get out of there with a smooth frame rate. Now the high settings, I can use this on mainly prop planes, uh, definitely the default aircraft that come with Prepare 3D, and um, you know sometimes some A2A stuff, I can run the high settings. I might also put this one on and then tweak a few things just to get the frame rate you know, right where I want it, but yeah, generally I use this one. Uh, we'll start with medium settings because this is the one I mainly use, um, and the, you know, the settings I would overall recommend. So let's get in here and look at this. I'm not going to um, run every name off because you can see them all here. So the FXAA I have off, MSAA, 8 samples. Um, running 16 times on the texture filtering here. And for the resolution on this profile, I'm running 2048 by 2048. I have the V-Sync off and the triple buffering off. I get, like a, I get a smoother performance out of this. And... Um, and then I run the target frame rate unlimited. I had it at 30 at one point, and it actually costs you a few frames when you don't run it on unlimited. At least for me, I think I gained like eight more frames running it unlimited. So that's what I do there. Um, I don't use the wide view aspect ratio, and uh, yeah, it's going to be it for this page. For the scenery, I'm running the level of detail radius at ultra, and then I have the rest of these at this size. have a uh, the water detail at high, um, scenery complexity at dense, the vegetation at very dense, and then the autogen building density at dense. I have the special effects off. These can cost you in frames per second, so I just keep them off. Here's my HDR lighting, and uh, here's my shadows. I run those at high, and I run these to at 80 all the way to full. And I do recommend doing that because if you don't, if you run them lower, like down here in the middle, when you're flying and you look out the window, you can actually see where the shadow cast is cut off, and it doesn't look that nice, so I don't run that. Um, and then, yeah, I have the cast and receive just on these items. Now, for the weather, I'm running the cloud draw distance at 90 miles. If you're using Active Sky and you have your cloud draw distance set to anything different than here, it will override it and use what's set up in Active Sky. So, for instance, if you run your cloud draw distance in here at 90 and in Active Sky it's set at 70, it'll actually be running at 70, not what you have set in here. Um, the cloud coverage density I have at maximum. Let's go over to the traffic. Run all these at 100. Um, I don't run them at 100 for the entire flight, but while I'm on the ground and taxiing, I do. Um, just because the AI can do some silly things sometimes, so I don't uh, trust the AI, but having it on the ground is fine, and I do not see a uh, frame dip in any of these, so I, it's okay for you to run these at 100. Um, you shouldn't see a difference m uh, much at all. Now with the road vehicles, you will see a massive difference, so I keep these low at 10. The ships and ferries I do turn on sometimes, 
depends on the airport uh, from near any water I will turn those on but uh, that's it for this profile let's go check out the high settings profile which everything's pretty much maxed out on um, everything is the same on this page except for the uh, texture resolution I'm running at 4096 by 4096 um, let's go over the scenery. Everything is maxed out here. I have the special effects at medium, water detail, ultra, and all these are extremely dense. For the lighting, uh, same thing except the shadow quality I have on ultra. Weather, exactly the same. Traffic is exactly the same. Uh, let's go over to the low settings profile. Um, this is like the medium settings where I have the uh, resolution at, and uh, yeah, everything's the same on this page. Now everything on here starts to get a little low. I have the, these all at normal. Special effects are still off. Water detail is at high, and this seems to give me a good frame rate. Like I said, under the uh, certain situations where it's uh, running a little heavy. I actually have the shadow cast turned down a little bit on this profile. 60 is still good. Just, you know, anything in the middle or lower is not going to look good. Um, for the weather, for some reason this is at 100, but I think I run it at 90 in Active Sky, so like I said, that doesn't matter. Traffic, still running this at 10. I could actually probably bump that even down. This is still all at 100, but. 10 for the road vehicle seems to be pretty good for frames, but you know, if you go 100, you will see a huge difference. I think this slider alone is probably, it's definitely one of the top um, frames per second killers in the whole setup. And uh, that's it for this. Uh, this is all the settings for Prepare 3D. Now let's go take a look at what I've set up in Rex 4 Texture Direct. So here is Rex 4 Texture Direct. Um, I don't really use this too much anymore for the airports and the runway taxi markings and all that stuff because I'm usually using Payware Airport. But what I do use it for is the clouds because I have soft clouds installed into this. And this is uh, very important. Now. I always get asked what I'm doing for my clouds, and uh, I'm usually running um, ones off this page. I think right now I have set 14 going, and then for the low-level clouds, where um, this is where they really start to look nice, I switch these up, but the ones that I like, I like to use 32, and then I also like uh, 29. I think 29 is the one I'm using right now. And, uh, yeah, I just use these. I switch them up depending on the situation. And, uh, let's see. The lightning and effects, I'm using, um, I'm using number four. For the sky colors, I also change these up a lot. It depends on the time of the year and where I'm flying. If I'm flying over ocean, for instance, I like to use the ocean view one, um, if I'm wintertime in certain areas, I use this one. I think they have one for, yes, they do have one for Colorado. I'll use this one if I'm in Colorado. You know, it just depends. But I do um, do switch these up a lot. But all right, everybody, that is my settings for 2017. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Uh, remember, you can download my settings profiles at theflightsimdeck.com where I have all kinds of other good stuff, so make sure you check that out. Alright everybody, thanks for watching. Hope this video helps you in some way. You guys take care and I'll see you on the next video.